In this video, we're going to talk about Giovanni da Bologna and one of his greatest masterpieces, The Abduction of the Sabine Woman. Giovanni da Bologna, unlike many famous Renaissance artists, wasn't actually Italian. He was born in northern France, but he died in Florence, Italy at age 79. Gian Bologna is the Italian version of his original name, Gian Bologna. He was first mentored by a Flemish sculptor and architect, Jacques de Broek, who sculpted in Italian style since it was the standard at the time. He journeyed to Italy where at first he was not treated nicely and lost competitions or commissions simply because he was a foreigner. He found a wealthy patron from Rome who introduced him to Francesco de' Medici, Grand Duke of Tuscany and son of Cosimo I. Francesco de' Medici acknowledged his talents, ignoring the fact that he's not a Florentine. Jean Bologna's works became influential in the late 16th century to early 17th century. Jean Bologna was inspired by Hellenistic sculptures as well as a greatly known Florentine artist, Michelangelo. At the time Jean Bologna journeyed to Italy, he was just 21 years old competing with other Italian artists trying to be the next Michelangelo. There's even a rumor that they actually met in person, where Jean Bologna asked Michelangelo himself to critic his work. Michelangelo redid his work into a better form and told him to learn how to model a sketch before finishing it. Yet, in many ways, he was the opposite of Michelangelo. He was a very efficient artist who always finished his works without delays, always fit the budget given to him no matter the size or medium, delivered always with a smile. He also makes his works without focusing on theology or intellectual content, instead focuses on the dynamism of the form and composition of his sculptures. He also didn't learn from Michelangelo's works only. He learned from the sculptures made by those whom Michelangelo learned from. Here are examples of some of his most notable works. The equestrian monument of Cosimo I, father of Francesco de' Medici or Francis I, and the flying Mercury, which is a bronze figure, one of his most recognizable sculptures of all time that has many copies and has been used by multiple companies. And back then, it was just a small commission. And the last one on the right is his marble sculpture of Hercules fighting the centaur Nessus. It was his last work in marble before he passed away. As you can see here, it is full of violence, action, and passion. My personal favorite is the giant Apennine, or the crouching figure of a mountain god, located in one of Francesco de' Medici's villa gardens. I like it because it's very original and it has the same vibe as Donatello's Mary Magdalene. And also, it's colossal and it's like a very big gnome in a garden. It was constructed at the same time as the abduction of the Sabine woman. Now, the abduction of the Sabine woman, made in 1582, is one of his greatest works in marble. In fact, it is considered as his masterpiece. This group of three figures is made up of one single block of marble, four meters high, located in Piazza della Signora and it hasn't been moved there since 400 years ago. Unlike the David of Michelangelo, this sculpture has no particular front side. The abduction of the Sabine woman was composed in a spiral way designed to be viewed in multiple angles. In contrast to the title, the sculpture wasn't actually about the abduction of the Sabine woman, but about the three stages of man. The older man at the bottom looks like he was defeated by a younger man who stole his wife, which is a young woman. Only later interpretations led to the title connecting the story of the ancient Romans who needed to repopulate but lacked women in their population. So they negotiated with their neighboring tribe of Sabine for their women. The negotiation failed, so they just abducted the women. But again, it wasn't how Jambolonia intended it to look like, because he didn't really have a specific narrative or depth his work, and only focused on creating a vigorous composition. Giovanni da Bologna is classified as a mannerist sculptor, 
because he lived in the generation after Michelangelo but also a generation before the Baroque period. He was like the bridge between the Renaissance and Baroque. Mannerism is all about complex new poses and elongation of limbs to create elegant compositions which really showed in Giambologna's abduction of the savvy woman. Due to the success of this masterpiece, Gian Bologna's work inspired artists of the Baroque period. Painters like Nicolas Posin and Pietro da Cortona were also inspired by this figural group. They even named their paintings after his sculpture. And of course, sculptor and architect Gian Lorenzo Bernini, who made a three-figure sculpture of Aeneas, Anchises, and Ascanius. He also made a work similar to the theme of the abduction of the savvy woman, titled The Abduction of Proserpina, also known as Pluto and Proserpina. Today, many artists create works without any intended meaning planned, focusing on making their works look beautiful, even without narratives or context necessary. I believe that without the contributions of the foreign artist Gian Bologna, art history would have been different. Maybe the Baroque period would have turned out very differently, and those works and artists he inspired wouldn't have happened. And that was Giovanni da Bologna.